Good evening, everyone. Uh, today is May 9th, 2017, and uh, we are here tonight uh, to uh, move towards uh, uh, adopting the uh, conference committee report on the transportation omnibus bill. Uh, for purposes of uh, the procedure tonight, um, I would indicate that uh, I don't uh, anticipate any further testimony on everything. I, I, I feel that uh, we've had uh, testimony here in the conference committee as well as in our respective committees in the uh, House and in the Senate. Um, there are two amendments that are going to be offered tonight. One is the A17 amendment that will be offered to the DE amendment that we had adopted the last time that we had met. And there is uh, also coming an oral amendment. Uh, and just so that you have a heads up so you could find find it ahead of time, the oral amendment will be to delete sections 125, 128, and 136. So it will be oral amendment to delete 125, 128, and 136. Um, after, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, anticipating the that the amendments uh, will be adopted, uh, then uh, I will entertain a motion uh, to adopt the DE amendment as amended uh, into the conference committee report. Uh, members of the, of the committee, are, do any of you have any questions regarding the procedure as to how uh, I would intend to proceed? Okay, uh, seeing <coughs> none. Uh, and I incidentally, uh, I would anticipate that we will have uh, staff walk us through both the fiscal changes uh, and um, the, the policy changes to the uh, amendment. And um, why don't uh, we start with Ms. Stengel or uh, Ms. Boyd, if, if you want to walk through the fiscal changes to the A-17 amendment. Mr. Chair, um uh, I'm not sure what document to work off of. I think what I'll do is just get a, give an overview of the few changes there are in the appropriations. And if anyone has more particular questions about where they're located in the documents, I can certainly answer those. Um, uh, there were a few changes um, from the, the last DE amendment that was adopted by the conference committee. Um, the first is to reduce the airport fund appropriation by 200000 in fiscal year 19 as a one-time change. Um, in airport development and assistance, um, that's just 200,000 taken off the um, 2.5 million suggested increase, so now it's 2.3 million in 19. And that was just to accommodate changes that were, um, that are in the tax bill that also affected the airport fund balance, and those are to keep the fund balance whole. So that, that's a one-time reduction. <coughs> also, there is a shift of $4 million in general fund um, from the one-time appropriations to hazardous material rail safety program in 1819 that four million is reduced from that program and instead um, there is a one-time uh, general fund appropriation of four million for the biennium for town roads um, the um, new changes also include a deletion of the 968,000 trunk highway fund appropriation for the city of red wing for highway 61 for excess trunk highway project costs. A uh, settlement was reached in that matter, and so that appropriation is no longer needed. Um, there are also decreases to overall trunk highway fund appropriations relative to the, the last agreement um, to, meet, to not exceed the trunk highway fund balance um, in talks with MnDOT since the amendment was adopted. Um, changes in the bill changed the unreserved fund balance, and we had to make some changes to accommodate that. So those total about 27 million, and those cuts were just taken proportionally from the suggested increases um, for state road construction, operations and maintenance, planning and research, and program delivery. Those are just taken proportionally from there so that we don't overspend the fund balance in 18 and 19. Um, also, there was an increase to the um, uh, to the Met Council general fund appropriation. The previous amendment had 15 million a year extra one time in 1819, and the new amendment um, is 25 million. So that's an increase of 25 million a year. So an increase of 10 million a year for 50 million. 
um, to stay within the target of $372 million for 1819 from the general fund. That extra $20 million was taken from the projected shift um, from the auto part sales tax revenues to highway user tax distribution fund. So that will be $20 million less in the biennium for highway user tax distribution. Um, there is an, a slight increase to Mr. projected Chair. debt service. Mr. Chair. Representative Hull. Uh, could we, I just ask that she could read the line number so we can find this stuff a little bit quicker. Sure, Ms. Boyd. Mr. Chair, I apologize. I was not working from the spreadsheet, but I can certainly point this out. Um, the, maybe we'll back up to the trunk highway fund reductions. <clears throat> to just accommodate the fund balance um, would be located, if you're looking at the spreadsheet, um, the, the last column on the revised spreadsheet shows the conference position changes between the last um, voted on agreement and the amendment before you tonight. So on line 154 of the spreadsheet on page 4, there is a reduction to the operations and maintenance um, increase of $9.9 million. So the increase remains for the biennium 82.9 million, but that is 9.9 .9 less than was um, in the previous agreement. Planning and delivery is on line 164, and that's a reduction of 666,000 from the previous agreement. The next change is on line 177 on page five for program delivery, and that's a reduction of 7.4 million <clears throat> from the previous agreement. And state road construction changes are on line 188 of the spreadsheet, and that is 20, uh, around 24 million um, reduction from the previous agreement. On line 202, you'll see the slight increase to debt service, and that's just in working with the management and budget. Um, these are more refined debt service estimates on the authorizations in the bill. The bond authorizations have not changed from the last agreement. But that's an increase of 2.56 million over the 1819 biennium. The next change I was discussing was the Met Council change, and that is located on page 8 of the spreadsheet. You'll see that on line 336, the last line on that page. And that's an increase of roughly 20 million. Um, 20 million is uh, an addition to the suggested increase to the appropriation, and then an additional 16,000 was added to the cost for the guideway status report. Um, and Mr. Chair, I believe that was my, oh, I just wanted to point out on the, I'm sorry, on page 13 of the spreadsheet, I just wanted to point out on lines 529 and 530, I'm sorry, 528 and 529, um, you'll see the, the corresponding reduction to the shift um, from the sales tax and auto parts, and that's the extra 20 million for the biennium that is now going toward um, Met Council. Mr. Lee, anything to add to the fiscal? Um, any questions by any members? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Stengel, if you would walk us through policy changes. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, I'm looking at the amendment uh, numbered A17-0443. Uh, it's a page and line amendment uh, that was prepared today, um, and that's what we'll be looking at here, and I'll, I'll point out what we're looking at as we go along. Um, you'll see a lot of changes to the numbers. I will skip over all of those because Ms. Boyd already explained how all of the money moves around. So on line 1.13 of the amendment, uh, there's some new language about airport contingency appropriations uh, that will allow the Commissioner of Transportation um, to move some of the airport funds around uh, in certain situations. Uh, flipping to the next page, these are mostly technical conforming uh, changes with the numbers that Ms. Boyd went over already. Um, yes, thanks. So that, those uh, number changes continue all the way down through lines 3.24. On 3.25 and 3.26, you'll see that there is a change um, to one of the Metropolitan Council provisions. Um, and just to back up, uh, the amendment includes several similar effective dates and a couple other changes to the Met Council provisions that mirror the amendment that was adopted on the Senate floor. So I'll point those out as we go along. 
Um, Lines 27 and 28 are both technical cleanup um, uh, changes. Lines 29 and 30 um, narrow the road construction material special permit to exclude demolition materials. Um, the next page, line 4.1, it changes the year when the transit report is required from odd numbered years to even numbered years. Uh, the next two lines are another Met Council delayed effective date. Lines 4.5 4 to 4.7 are some clarifying language on determining the amount of tax proceeds to be remitted. Uh, line 4.8 makes the number change on the remittance of sales taxes. Uh, lines 4.9 to 4.16 are a new CTIB provision um, that says uh, if CTIB is dissolved, um, any money that goes to the counties from the CTIB tax proceeds must be spent on transportation related purposes. And to go along with that change, all of the existing CTIB provisions that were in the delete all amendment are now removed. And you'll see that on line 49 and 417. Lines 418 to, uh, 418 to 427 make some additional changes to the Met Council provisions. Essentially what's being done here is it allows the governor to appoint a chair to the Metropolitan Council, which is, increases the membership by one person. Um, and the chair will serve at the pleasure of the governor. On, on 4.28, it deletes the provision that allows cities and towns to apply for opt-out service providers, and that's replaced by a section that we'll get to in a minute. On lines 5.1 and 5.2 is another Met Council effective date change. Uh, line 5.3 deletes uh, the last <coughs> remaining CTIB section. And from 5.4 to 5.12, this is the new section I mentioned earlier that replaces the opt-out language. Uh, this specifically allows or requires the Met Council to provide financial assistance to the City of Excelsior uh, for opt-out services. On 514 through 533, uh, this deletes and replaces a section on the, the Wilkin County intersection of Trunk Highway 55 and Wilkin County Road 19. Uh, the only change here is that uh, now the department is required only to submit one report instead of two. And the December 31st, 2019 is now a goal instead of a hard deadline. Uh, line 5.34 through 6.6 .6 make conforming changes to the repealers. And that concludes the amendment. Bruce, anything you wish to add? Any questions or comments by any uh, of uh, the members on the uh, policy changes in the amendment. Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Osmond. Uh, could I ask, um, while I appreciate the city of Excelsior, which is in my district, having a specific provision in here for opt-out, could I have an explanation for that? I, forgive me, I didn't see this coming, that we're removing the possibility of opt-outs choosing to go in. Is this a... It's my understanding, Senator Osmond, that the, uh, that the only entity that uh, showed any interest in this provision at all was Excelsior. Any other questions by any other members? Uh, well, Ms. Stengel, uh, while we're at it, would you uh, please go through the uh, anticipated oral amendment removing sections 125, 128, and 136, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so looking at the delete everything amendment that was adopted by the conference committee uh, at a previous meeting, flip to page 110. And you will see section 125 there. This is legislative approval of light rail projects. Um, the first of a uh, series of three. All three of the sections require legislative approval of light rail projects but apply to different entities. So section 125 applies to regional rail authorities. Um, they can't spend money to construct a light rail line um, unless there's explicit legislative approval. On page 111, section 128 is a similar provision, except for this one applies to uh, a metropolitan county. And then if you flip to page 120, is the third and final of these provisions, that section 136, and this is the same provision, but it applies to the Met Council. Mr. Burris, anything you want to add to the explanation? Uh, Mr. Chair, no, I... Thank you. Uh, members, any questions regarding the anticipated removal of those three sections? 
Seeing none, um, I think then what we will do is move on to uh, the adoption of the A-17 uh, amendment. Um, Representative Torkelson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to move the adoption of the A-17-0443 amendment to the A-17-0410 uh, amendment that we adopted earlier. Questions by any of the members <coughs> to Representative Torkelson's motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the adoption of the A-17-0443 amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion is adopted. Uh, then uh, Representative Torkelson to the uh, oral amendment regarding the deletion of the section 125, 128, and 136, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make an oral amendment to delete those sections, section 125, section 128, and section 136 in the A17-0410. Any questions by any members? Mr. Chair. Senator I Request a roll call vote. Roll call requested, roll call granted. Any questions by any members? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Nelson, as soon as you are ready, if you would please take the roll. Newman? Yes. Osmek? No. <clears throat> Jasinski? Yes. Kiffmeyer? Yes. Sparks? Petersburg? Yes. Uh, Kosnick? Pass. Howe? No. Runbeck? No. Torkelson? Yes. Kosnick? Yes. There being three affirmative uh, Senate, Senate uh, votes and three affirmative uh, representative votes, the motion is adopted. So, Mr. Chair, perhaps I misunderstood the uh, conversation on the floor today. I had understood those were going to remain in. That, is that, am I totally I'm, missing what happened? I, I'm sorry, Representative, I didn't understand your oh. question. Well, I, was, uh, I had a conversation on the floor today with, with Representative Torkelson, and I believe he had said that those were going to remain in. Um, Representative Runbeck, of course, I was not a party to the conversation on the floor uh, on, on the House today, so I really don't know how to respond to the question. Perhaps, um, Mr. Chair, is there any um, conversation you could relay in terms of of that section, those sections, and and what changed? I guess I'd like to know that. Are, uh, Representative, are you referring to the conversation uh, that you had with someone on the floor of the House? Well, you, well, I'm referring to those three sections. I was not aware that they were going to be taken out. And your question? Well, I just wondered what the what the, the sense of the conversation was about why those are coming out. The, the only um, direction that I could possibly give to you is uh, I believe that there was a conversation that occurred between the speaker and the Senate Majority Leader. And my suggestion, Representative Runbeck, would be to speak to the speaker. Okay. Just okay. the best explanation I give you. Thank you. Any further questions by any of the members? Uh, seeing none, Representative Torkelson, anything further that you can, oh, we have to adopt. The we have thing. to adopt, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we now have to entertain a motion uh, to 
uh, adopt the DE amendment as amended to the conference committee. Is that correct, Ms. Stengel? Kind of close? Kind of close. Uh, maybe you want to give us the motion that we can we can utilize. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I believe the motion would be something to the effect of um, to direct staff to prepare the conference committee report to reflect the uh, delete all amendment as amended and prepare it for signatures. Much better stated, Representative Torkelson. Would you um, care to make the motion? Uh, thank you, Senator. I would make that motion as stated by Ms. Stengel. Any discussion by any of the members? Seeing none, all those in favor of Representative Torkelson's motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The motion is adopted. Anything further? I think we have it now, Senator. Anything, you, <laughs> anything further you want to add? No. Okay. Uh, I, I believe that completes our, uh, our responsibilities tonight, and we stand adjourned.